Mini, Wikipedia article audio. The Mini is a small economy car produced by the English-based British Motor Corporation and its successors from 1959 until 2000. The original is considered an icon of 1960s British popular culture. Its space-saving transverse engine front-wheel drive layout allowing 80% of the area of the car's floor pan to be used for passengers and luggage influenced a generation of car makers. In 1999 the Mini was voted the second most influential car of the 20th century, behind the Ford Model T, and ahead of the Citroen DS and Volkswagen Beetle. Design and Development Mark the first Mini, 1959-67 Mark two Mini, 1967-70 Mark three. 1969-76 Mark 4 and onwards, 1976-2000 Variants Wolseley Hornet and Riley Elf Morris Mini Traveler and Austin Mini Countryman Mini Van Mini Moak Mini Pickup Morris Mini K Mini Cooper and Cooper S, 1961-1971-1990-2000 Mini Clubman and 1275 GT, 1969-80 Australia End of production Timeline Limited editions Concepts and unproduced prototypes Kit cars and customization Motor sport International rally victories British saloon car championship titles European touring car championship titles Australian endurance racing class wins Awards this distinctive two-door car was designed for BMC by Sir Alec Isaganis. It was manufactured at the Longbridge and Cowley plants in England, the Victoria Park slash Zetland British Motor Corporation factory in Sydney, Australia, and later also in Spain, Belgium, Chile, Italy, Malta, Portugal, South Africa, Uruguay. Venezuela and Yugoslavia. The Mini Mark I had three major UK updates the Mark II, the Clubman and the Mark III. Within these was a series of variations, including an estate car, a pickup truck, a van, and the Mini Moak, a Jeep-like buggy. Sales United States The performance versions the Mini Cooper and Cooper S, were successful as both race and rally cars, winning the Monte Carlo Rally in 1964, 1965 and 1967. In 1966, the first placed Mini was disqualified after the finish, under a controversial decision that the car's headlights were against the rules. Safety Record 50th Anniversary On its introduction in August 1959 the Mini was marketed under the Austin and Morris names, as the Austin 7 and Morris Mini Minor. The Austin 7 was renamed Austin Mini in January 1962 and Mini became a mark in its own right in 1969. In 1980 it once again became the Austin Mini and in 1988 the Rover Mini. BMW acquired the Rover Group in 1994, and sold the greater part of it in 2000, but retained the rights to build cars using the Mini name. The Mini came about because of a fuel shortage caused by the 1956 Suez Crisis. Petrol was once again rationed in the UK, sales of large cars slumped, and the market for German bubble cars boomed. The Fiat 500, 
launched in 1957, was also hugely successful, especially in its native Italy. Leonard Lord, the somewhat autocratic head of BMC, reportedly detested these cars so much that he vowed to rid the streets of them and design a proper miniature car. He laid down some basic design requirements, the car should be contained within a box that measured 10 times 4 times 4 feet, and the passenger accommodation should occupy 6 feet of the 10-foot length, and the engine, for reasons of cost, should be an existing unit. Alec Isaganis, who had been working for Alvis, had been recruited back to BMC in 1955 with a brief from Lord to design a range of technically advanced family cars in the same innovative spirit as his earlier Morris Minor to complement BMC's existing conventional models. Isaganis had set out design projects for three cars large and small family cars and a very small economy car. His initial work was on the largest car, designated XC9001, with the smallest car, XC9003, having the lowest priority despite it being Isaganis' greatest personal interest. With Lord's dictum to produce a bubble car competitor and his revised design requirements being laid down in October 1956, Work on XC9001 stopped and XC9003 became the priority. The team that designed the Mini was remarkably small, as well as Isaganus. There was Jack Daniels, Chris Kingham, two engineering students and four draftsmen. Together, by July 1957, they had designed and built the original XC9003 prototype which was affectionately named the Orange Box because of its color. Leonard Lord approved the car for production on July 19 and XC9003 became Project AD015. The AD015 used a conventional BMC A-series four-cylinder, water-cooled engine, but departed from tradition by mounting it transversely, with the engine oil lubricated four-speed transmission in the sump, and by employing front-wheel drive. Almost all small front-wheel drive cars developed since have used a similar configuration, except with the transmission usually separately enclosed rather than using the engine oil. The radiator was mounted at the left side of the car so that the engine-mounted fan could be retained but with reversed pitch so that it blew air into the natural low-pressure area under the front wing. This location saved vehicle length, but had the disadvantage of feeding the radiator with air that had been heated by passing over the engine. It also exposed the entire ignition system to the direct ingress of rainwater through the grill. Early prototypes used the existing 948 cubic centimeters A series unit but this provided the AD015 with performance far greater than its price and purpose required a top speed of over 90 miles per hour. The engine was reduced to a new 848 cubic centimeters capacity with a shorter stroke. This reduced power from 37 to 33 bhp and caused a significant drop in torque and so provided more realistic performance, especially when the AD015 body was widened by 2 inches over the XC9003 prototype which blunted the car's top speed while improving its stability and road holding. Even so, the AD015 had a top speed of 75 miles per hour which was better than many other economy cars of the time. The suspension system, designed by Isaganis's friend Dr. Alex Moulton at Moulton Developments Limited, used compact rubber cones instead of conventional springs. This space-saving design also featured rising progressive rate springing of the cones, and provided some natural damping, in addition to the normal dampers. Built into the subframes, the rubber cone system gave a raw and bumpy ride accentuated by the woven webbing seats, but the rigidity of the rubber cones, 
together with the wheels positioning at the corners of the car, gave the mini go-kart-like handling. Initially an interconnected fluid system was planned, similar to the one that Alec Isaganis and Alex Moulton were working on in the mid-1950s at Alvis. They had assessed the mechanically interconnected Citroën 2 CV suspension at that time, which inspired the design of the hydrolastic suspension system for the Mini and Morris Slash Austin 1100, to try to keep the benefits of the 2 CV system, but with added roll stiffness that the 2 CV lacked. The short development time of the car meant this was not ready in time for the Mini's launch. The system intended for the Mini was further developed and the hydrolastic system was first used on the Morris 1100, launched in 1962, the Mini gained the system later in 1964. As launched the Mini had simpler suspension made from conical springs of solid rubber. These were compact, saving on intrusion into the cabin space, and required no maintenance. The fully independent suspension the rubber cones provided was almost unheard of in low-cost cars of the time. The conical shape gave the springs a progressive action, becoming stiffer at greater degrees of compression. This gave the AD015 a smooth ride over small bumps but minimized roll and pitch on more uneven surfaces. It also allowed the springs to cope with the huge variance in load between an unladen car and a fully laden one. 10-inch wheels were specified, so new tires had to be developed, the initial contract going to Dunlop. Isaganis went to Dunlop stating that he wanted even smaller, 8-in wheels. An agreement was made on the 10-inch size after Dunlop rejected the 8-inch proposition. Many features were designed into the Adu 15S interior to maximize its passenger and luggage space on top of the major savings allowed by the transverse engine and 10-inch wheels. Sliding windows allowed single-skin doors to be fitted, improving elbow room and reducing costs. A bracing bar was fitted across the door frame to brace the single skin and this was later adapted into a large storage bin on each door. Isaganis would later say that he had sized the bins to carry the ingredients of his favorite drink, a dry martini in the correct proportions similar bins were provided outboard of the rear seats, also serving a dual function of bracing the single skin body panel. Small items could also be stowed under the rear seats, and early minis would be sold with optional wicker baskets specially shaped to slot under the seats. The fixed rear parcel shelf contributed to the rigidity of the body shell, although it did preclude fitting the AD015 with a hatchback. The boot lid was hinged at the bottom so that the car could be driven with it open to increase luggage space. On early cars the number plate was hinged at the top so that it could swing down to remain visible when the boot lid was open. This feature was later discontinued after it was discovered that exhaust gases could leak into the cockpit when the boot was open. The Mini was designed as a monocoque shell with welded seams visible on the outside of the car running down the A and C pillars, and between the body and the floor pan. Those that ran from the base of the A-pillar to the wheel well were described as averted to provide more room for the front seat occupants. To further simplify construction, the hinges for the doors and boot lid were mounted externally. This also saved a small amount of cabin space. It also made the AD015 very easy to assemble from complete knock-down kits in overseas markets with only basic industry. Cars could be assembled with minimal use of jigs as the external seams made the panels largely self-aligning. They also allowed panels to be stacked flat on top of one another for easy shipping. As originally built all the structural body panels were welded to the top of the single floor pressing but this caused major problems with water ingress to the cabin and was quickly changed in the first months of production.
Early prototypes were fully unitary in construction but the cars broke apart under the high loads from the large lever ratios used with the rubber cone suspension. The design was changed to use steel subframes to carry the drivetrain and suspension for the front and rear. This also simplified production as both subframes could be built up independently and then mated to the already completed body shell. It also opened up the possibility of easily producing variants on the AD015 as a body of any shape or design could be used provided it could accommodate the subframes. In 1959, BMC and Alec Isaganis won the Dewar Trophy, for the design and production of the Mini. The Mini shape had become so well known that by the 1990s, Rover Group the heirs to BMC were able to register its design as a trademark in its own right. The production version of the Mini was demonstrated to the press in April 1959, and by August several thousand cars had been produced ready for the first sales. The Mini was officially announced to the public on August 26, 1959. Some 2,000 cars had already been sent abroad and were displayed that day in almost 100 countries. The first example, a Morris Mini Minor with the registration 621 A Oak, is on display at the Heritage Motor Center in Warwickshire. Another early example from 1959 is on display at the National Motor Museum in Hampshire. The Mini was marketed under BMC's two main brand names, Austin and Morris, until 1969, when it became a mark in its own right. The Morris version was known to all as the Mini or the Morris Mini Minor. This seems to have been a play on words, the Morris Minor was a larger, well-known and successful car that continued in production, and Minor is Latin for lesser, so an abbreviation of the Latin word for least minimus was used for the new even smaller car. One name proposed for the almost identical Austin version was Austin Newmarket, but it was sold as the Austin 7 which recalled the popular small Austin 7 of the 1920s and 1930s. Until 1962, the cars appeared in North America and France as the Austin 850 and Morris 850, and in Denmark as the Austin Partner and Morris Mascot. The Morris name Mini was first used for Austin's version by BMC in 1961 when the Austin 7 was rebranded as the Austin Mini, somewhat to the surprise of the Sharps Commercials Car Company, who had been using the name Mini Car for their three-wheeled vehicles since 1949. However, legal action was somehow averted, and BMC used the name Mini thereafter. In 1964, the suspension of the cars was replaced by another molten design, the hydroelastic system. The new suspension gave a softer ride, but it also increased weight and production cost. In 1971, the original rubber suspension reappeared and was retained for the remaining life of the Mini. From October 1965 the option of the unique automotive products designed four-speed automatic transmission became available. Cars fitted with this became the Minimatic. Slow at the outset, Mark the first sales strengthened across most of the model lines in the 1960s, and production totaled 1,190,000. Ford purchased a Mini and dismantled it to see if they could offer an alternative. Ford determined that the BMC must have been losing around £30 per car, and so decided to produce a larger car the Cortina, launched in 1962 as its competitor in the budget market. BMC insisted that the way company overheads were shared out, the Mini always made money. Larger profits came from the popular deluxe models and from optional extras such as seat belts, door mirrors, a heater and a radio, which would be considered necessities on modern cars, 
as well as the various Cooper and Cooper S models. The Mini entered into popular culture in the 1960s with well-publicized purchases by film and music stars. The Cooper S version was also used by some British police departments as a plain clothes car. The first Morris Mini Miners sold in Texas being delivered to a family in Arlington, Texas, in 1959. 1963 Austin Mini the Mark II Mini was launched at the 1967 British Motor Show, and featured a redesigned grille, a larger rear window and numerous cosmetic changes. A total of 429,000 MK2 Minis were produced. A variety of Mini types were made in Pamplona, Spain, by the Otha Company from 1968 onwards mostly under the Morris name. In 1969, a fiberglass version of the Mini Mark II was developed for British Leland's Chilean subsidiary. The body shell mold was created by the Peel Engineering Company. Production began in 1970 and continued for a few years, these fiberglass minis can be recognized by the missing body seams and by larger panel gaps. The Chilean market was never very large and the hyperinflation and political and social collapse led to the 1973 coup the Arica plant was closed in 1974. The reason for the fiberglass body was to enable Leland to meet very strict requirements for local sourcing, increasing to 70.22% in 1971. First prefix letter name, R. Riley. W. Wolseley, second prefix letter engine type, A, third prefix letter body type, two's two door saloon, fourth prefix series of model, one first series, two second series, three third series, fifth prefix, L left hand drive. The Mark III Mini had a modified body shell with enough alterations to see the factory code change from AD015 to AD020. The most obvious changes were larger doors with concealed hinges. Customer demand led to the sliding windows being replaced with winding windows although some Australian manufactured Mark I Minis had adopted this feature in 1965. The suspension reverted from hydrolastic to rubber cones as a cost-saving measure. Production at the Cowley plant was ended, and the simple name Mini completely replaced the separate Austin and Morris brands. In April 1974 a heater became standard equipment on the entry-level Mini 850 as well having by then already been included in the standard specification of the other models for some time. In the late 1970s, Innocenti introduced the Innocenti 90 and 120, Bertone designed hatchbacks based on the Mini platform. Bertone also created a Mini Cooper equivalent, christened the Innocenti de Tommaso, that sported a 1,275 cubic centimeters engine similar to the MG Metro engine, but with an 11 stud head a special inlet manifold, and used the A-clutch instead of the Verto type. It also used homokinetic shafts instead of rubber couplings. The Mini was still popular in Britain, but appeared increasingly outdated in the face of newer and more practical rivals. Since the late 1960s, plans had been in place for a newer and more practical Super Mini to replace it though the Mini was still the only car of this size built by British Leyland for the home market. The Mark IV was introduced in 1976, even though by this stage British Leyland was working on a new small car which was widely expected to replace the Mini before much longer. It had a front rubber-mounted subframe with single tower bolts and the rear frame had some larger bushings introduced. Twin stock indicators were introduced with larger foot pedals. From 1977 onwards, 
the rear indicator lamps had the reverse lights incorporated in them. In 1980, the engine was upgraded to the improved A Plus unit from the new Metro. This was then followed by a number of later incremental developments. In 1978, the Mini was one of the key cars made available to disabled motorists under the new Motability Scheme. Reports of the Mini's imminent demise surfaced again in 1980 with the launch of the Austin Mini Metro. Faced with competition from a new wave of modern super minis like the Ford Fiesta, Renault 5 and Volkswagen Polo, the Mini was beginning to fall out of favor in many export markets, with the South African, Australian and New Zealand markets all stopping production around this time. Buyers of small cars now wanted modern and practical designs, usually with a hatchback. Although the Mini continued to be produced after the Metro's launch, production volumes were reduced as British Leland and successor Combine Rover Group concentrated on the Metro as its key Super Mini. 1981 was the original Mini's last year in the top 10 of Britain's top-selling cars, as it came ninth and the Metro was fifth. The arrival of the Metro also saw production of the larger Allegro pruned back before it was finally discontinued in 1982. In 1982 BL made 56,297 minis and over 175,000 metros. During the early 1980s the Mini received many mechanical upgrades which were shared with the Metro, such as the A-plus engine, 12-inch wheels with front disc brakes, improved soundproofing, and quieter, stronger transmissions. This not only modernized the Mini but, because many of its major sub-assemblies were now shared with the Metro, made it very cost-effective to produce despite falling sales volumes. The Mini's 25th anniversary fell in 1984 and British Leland produced a Mini 25 limited edition model, both to mark the occasion and to publicize the recent upgrades to the model. This marked the start of a turnaround in the Mini's fortunes. Basic models such as the City and the City E filled in the bottom of the Austin Rover range and still found buyers who wanted a compact city car that was easy to park and cheap to run. Low purchase and running costs also made the Mini continually popular as a first car for younger drivers, and Austin Rover introduced a steady stream of limited editions with bright paint colors, body graphics, and trim to appeal to this market. The Mini was also becoming prized as a characterful and nostalgic car in its own right, and the London collection of limited edition models were more upmarket and luxurious and named after affluent or fashionable parts of London. These marketing strategies proved very successful. Mini production actually saw modest increases through the mid 1980s, from 34,974 in 1985 to 35,280 in 1985 and 39,800 in 1986. By 1990, with the reintroduction of the very popular Cooper model, Mini production would pass 40,000. In 1988 Austin Rover decided to keep the Mini in production for as long as it was viable to do so, putting an end to reports that it would be discontinued by 1991 by which time the original Metro would also be replaced. The fiberglass Mini built in Chile from 1970 until 1974 was not the only fiberglass version, in the summer of 1991. A fiberglass bodied Mini again entered production, this time in Venezuela. The producer, Facurxa, intended to sell the car in the Caribbean and Central America, and also had plans for Brazilian assembly. The popularity of the original Mini spawned many models that targeted different markets. Released in 1961 as more luxurious versions of the Mini, both the Wolseley Hornet and the Riley Elf had longer, 
slightly finned rear wings and larger boots that gave the cars a more traditional three-box design. Wheelbase of the Elf and Hornet remained at 2.036 m, whereas the overall length was increased to 3.27 m. This resulted in a dry weight of 638 kg 642.3 kg for the Elf and 618 kg 636.4 kg for the Hornet. Front End Treatment, which incorporated each mark's traditional upright grille design, also contributed to a less utilitarian appearance. The cars had larger diameter chrome hubcaps than the Austin and Morris Minis, and additional chrome accents, bumper overriders, and wood veneer dashboards. The Riley was the more expensive of the two cars. The name Wolseley Hornet was first used on 1930s saloon, coupe, sports, and racing cars, while the name Elf recalled the Riley Sprite and Imp sports cars also of the 1930s. The full-width dashboard was a differentiator between the Elf and Hornet. This dashboard was the idea of Christopher Milner the sales manager for Riley. Both the Riley Elf's and Wolseley Hornet's bodies were built at Fisher and Ludlow under their Fisholo brand name. Plates in the engine compartment on the right side Fitch plate bear evidence of this speciality. Very early Mark the first versions of both cars had no overriders on the bumpers and a single-piece front wing that was soon given up again, allegedly due to cost. The Elf's and Hornet's special bumper overriders first appeared in 1962. Early production Mark I's also had a combination of leather and cloth seats whereas all later models had full leather seats. Mark the first models were equipped with single leading shoe brakes on the front. Both the Elf and the Hornet went through three engine versions. Initially, they used the 848 cubic centimeters 34 bhp engine with a single HS2 carburetor, changing to a single HS2 carburetor 38 bhp version of the Cooper's 998 cubic centimeters power unit in the Mark II in 1963. This increased the car's top speed from 71 to 77 miles per hour. Therefore, Mark II cars also came with increased braking power in the form of front drum brakes with twin leading shoes to cope with the increased power output. Both Mark I and Mark II featured four-speed gearboxes with rod gear change, a.k.a. Magic Wand type. Automatic gearboxes became available on the Mark II in 1965 as an option. The Mark III facelift of 1966 brought wind-up windows and fresh air fascia vents. Concealed door hinges were introduced two years before these were seen on the mainstream Mini. The gear selecting mechanism was updated to the rod type, as seen on all later Mini type cars. Automatic gearboxes were available to the Mark III in 1967 again. Full four synchromesh gearing was eventually introduced during 1968. 30,912 Riley Elfs and 28,455 Wolseley Hornets were built. Production of both models ceased in late 1969. Vehicle Identification Serial Number Prefix Letter Code Code Example RA2S1-154321 These models were two-door estate cars with double barn-style rear doors. Both were built on a slightly longer chassis of 84 inches compared to 80.25 inches for the saloon. The early Morris Mini Traveler and Austin Mini Countryman cars had an internal fuel tank located on the left-hand side of the rear load area. This is identifiable by the fuel filler cap being on the left-hand side of the car just below the rear window. 
In October 1961 the fuel tank was relocated to the underneath of the car and the filler cap was moved to low down on the right hand side of the car the same configuration that was already in use on the minivan. From the start of production both models had a decorative, non-structural, ashwood trim on the rear body, in the style of a pre-war shooting brake. This gave the car a similar appearance to the larger Morris Minor Traveler and gave rise to these cars simply being called a Woody. It is a popular misconception that the difference between the Traveler and the Countryman is the wood trim. An all-steel version of both the Traveler and the Countryman without the wood trim was launched for export markets in April 1961 and for the home market in October 1962, but the Woody version remained more popular. In October 1967 the MK2 version was launched with the same changes as the Saloon. Approximately 108,000 Austin Mini Countrymans and 99,000 Morris Mini Travelers were built. Variations of this model were also built in South Africa, by Innocenti in Italy and by Industria de Montagem de Automoves in Portugal. The Mini Traveler and Countryman Register was created in 2009 to help locate and preserve the remaining Mini Traveler and Countryman cars. The minivan was a commercial panel van rated at one fourth ton load capacity. Built on the longer Traveler chassis but with outside windows, it proved popular in 1960s Britain as a cheaper alternative to the car, it was classed as a commercial vehicle and as such carried no sales tax. A set of simple stamped steel slots served in place of a more costly chrome grille. The minivan was renamed as the Mini 95 in 1978, the number representing the gross vehicle weight of 0.95 tons. 521,494 were built. A utility vehicle intended for the British Army was built with a twin-engined four-wheel drive. Although the 4WD Moke could climb a 1,2 gradient, it lacked enough ground clearance for military use. The single-engined front-wheel drive Moke enjoyed some popularity in civilian production. About 50,000 were made in total, from 1964 to 1968 in the UK, 1966 to 1982 in Australia and 1983 to 1989 in Portugal. The Moak was marketed in holiday locations such as Barbados and Macau, where they were also used as police cars. Moak is archaic British slang for a donkey. A pickup truck, 11 feet in total length was built on the longer minivan platform, with an open-top rear cargo area and a tailgate. The factory specified the weight of the pickup as less than 1,500 pounds with a full 6 imperial gallons tank of fuel. As with the van, the pickup had stamped metal slots for airflow into the engine compartment. The pickup was basic, although the factory brochure described a fully equipped mini pickup is also available which includes a recirculatory heater. Passenger side sun visor, seat belts, laminated windscreen, tilt tubes, and cover were also available at extra cost. Like the van, the pickup was renamed as the Mini 95 in 1978. A total of 58,179 Mini pickup models were built. Built in the Australian British Motor Corporation factory at Zetland, New South Wales, using 80% local content, the Morris Mini K was advertised as the Great Leap Forward. The Mini K had a 1,098 cubic centimetres engine and was the last round nose model to be produced in Australia, originally priced at $1,780. The Mini K was offered in two door saloon and two door van body styles.
It was distinctive in having wind up windows and a swiveling quarter light in MK.I style externally hinged doors. A small round sticker with a kangaroo logo was placed on the triangular panel between the door and the front body seam. The kangaroo name was supposedly coined because it is claimed that a kangaroo can go all day without drinking which the advertisers used to emphasize the frugal fuel consumption and, possibly, larger fuel tank. Isagana's friend John Cooper, owner of the Cooper Car Company and designer and builder of Formula One and Rally Cars, saw the potential of the Mini for competition. Isaganis was initially reluctant to see the Mini in the role of a performance car, but after John Cooper appealed to BMC management, the two men collaborated to create the Mini Cooper. The Austin Mini Cooper and Morris Mini Cooper debuted in September 1961. The 848 cubic centimeters engine from the Morris Mini Miner was given a longer stroke to increase capacity to 997 cubic centimeters increasing power from 34 to 55 bhp. The car featured a race-tuned engine, twin so carburetors, a closer ratio gearbox and front disc brakes, uncommon at the time in a small car. 1,000 units of this version were commissioned by management, intended for and designed to meet the homologation rules of Group 2 rally racing. The 997 cubic centimeters engine was replaced by a shorter stroke 998 cubic centimeters unit in 1964. In 1962, Rhodesian John Love became the first non-British racing driver to win the British Saloon Car Championship driving a Mini Cooper. A more powerful Mini Cooper, dubbed the S, was developed in tandem and released in 1963. Featuring a 1,071 cubic centimeters engine with a 70.61 mm bore and nitride steel crankshaft and strengthened bottom end to allow further tuning, and larger servo-assisted disc brakes, 4,030 Cooper S cars were produced and sold until the model was updated in August 1964. Cooper also produced two S models specifically for circuit racing in the under 1,000 cubic centimeters and under 1,300 cubic centimeters classes respectively, rated at 970 cubic centimeters and a 1,275 cubic centimeters, both had a 70.61 mm bore and both were also offered to the public. The smaller engine model was not well received, and only 963 had been built when the model was discontinued in 1965. The 1,275 cubic centimeters Cooper S models continued in production until 1971. Sales of the Mini Cooper were as follows. 64,000 mark the first Coopers with 997 cubic centimeters or 998 cubic centimeters engines, 19,000 mark the first Cooper S with 970 cubic centimeters, 1,071 cubic centimeters or 1,275 cubic centimeters engines. 16,000 Mark II Coopers with 998 cubic centimeters engines, 6,300 Mark II Cooper S with 1,275 cubic centimeters engines. There were no Mark III Coopers and just 1,570 Mark III Cooper S. In 1971, the Mini Cooper design was licensed in Italy by Innocenti and in 1973 to Spain by Authy, which began to produce the Innocenti Mini Cooper 1300 and the Authy Mini Cooper 1300, respectively. The Cooper name was discontinued from the UK Mini range at this time. A new Mini Cooper named the RSP was briefly relaunched in 1990 91 
with slightly lower performance than the 1960s Cooper. It proved popular and a new Cooper marked Mini went into full production in late 1991. To meet emission standards, Coopers from 1992 on were fitted with a fuel-injected version of the 1,275 cubic centimeters engine, and in 1997 a multi-point fuel-injected engine was introduced, along with a front-mounted radiator and various safety improvements. I love my Mini Cooper, remarked Madonna in 2003. I was too scared to drive a big car in London. In 1969, under the ownership of British Leland, the Mini was given a facelift by stylist Roy Haynes, who had previously worked for Ford. The restyled version was called the Mini Clubman, and has a square frontal look, using the same indicator slash side light assembly as the Austin Maxi. The Mini Clubman was intended to replace the upmarket Riley and Wolseley versions. A new model, dubbed the 1275 GT, was slated as the replacement for the 998 cubic centimeters Mini Cooper. The Clubman estate replaced the Countryman and Traveler. The original round front design remained in production alongside the Clubman and 1275 GT. Production of the Clubman and 1275 GT got off to a slow start because the cars incorporated lots of production changes including the relocation of tooling from the manufacturer's Cowley plant to the Longbridge plant. Very few cars were handed over to customers before the early months of 1970. Early domestic market Clubmans were still delivered on cross-ply tires despite the fact that by 1970 radials had become the norm for the car's mainstream competitors. By 1973 new Minis were, by default, being shipped with radial tires, though cross-plies could be specified by special order, giving British buyers a price saving of £8. The 1275 GT is often incorrectly described as the Mini Clubman 1275 GT. The official name was always just the Mini 1275 GT, and it was a separate distinct model from the Clubman. In 1971, the 1,275 cubic centimetres Mini Cooper S was discontinued in the UK, leaving the Mini 1,275 GT as the only sporting Mini on sale for the rest of the decade. Innocenti in Italy, however, continued making their own version of the Mini Cooper for some time. While the UK-built 1275 GT was not nearly as quick as a 1275 Mini Cooper S, it was cheaper to buy, run, and insure. It was the first Mini to be equipped with a tachometer. It also featured a standard fit close ratio gearbox, and initially had 10-inch raw-style wheels covering the 7.5-inch Cooper S-type disc brakes and a boot board, both were dropped in 1974. Performance of the 1275 GT was lively for the time, achieving 060 mph in 12.9 seconds, and the excellent midrange torque offered a 3050 mph time in top gear of only 9 seconds. The bluff front, however, meant that the model struggled to reach 90 miles per hour. Throughout the 1970s, British Leland continued to produce the classic 1959 round front design, alongside the newer Clubman and 1275 GT models. The long nose Clubman and 1275 GT offered better crash safety, were better equipped, and had better underbonnet access 
but they were more expensive and aerodynamically inferior to the original 1959 design. The Mini Clubman and 1275 GT were replaced in 1980 by the new hatchback Austin Metro, while production of the original round front Mini design continued for another 20 years. At the end of Clubman and 1275 GT production, 275,583 Clubman saloons, 197,606 Clubman estates and 110,673 1,275 GTS had been made. For the Australian market, all minis including the van gained the Clubman front in 1971 although the car was still basically a MKI behind the A pillar. The Australian van thus became the only Clubman van produced anywhere in the world. From mid-1971 to the end of 1972, a Clubman GT version of the saloon was produced. This was essentially a Cooper S in Clubman body, equipped with the same 7.5-inch disc brakes, twin fuel tanks, and twin carburetor Cooper S1275 cubic centimeters engine. Australian Clubman saloons were marketed under the Morris Mini Clubman name when introduced in August 1971, and as the Leland Mini, without the Clubman name, from February 1973. To end Mini production in Australia, a limited edition run-out model was produced the 1275 LS. Fitted with a pollution control 1,275 cubic centimeters engine sourced from Europe, the LS had a single 1.5-inch carburetor and 8.4-inch disc brakes. Production of this model commenced in July 1978 and concluded in October 1978 with an approximate total of 810 vehicles produced. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s the British market received numerous special editions of the Mini, which shifted the car from a mass market item into a fashionable icon. It was this image that perhaps helped the Mini become such an asset for BMW, which later bought the remnants of BMC as the Rover Group. It was even more popular in Japan, which took the lion's share of the circa 40,000 Minis produced annually in the early 1990s. It was seen there as a retro cool icon, and inspired many imitators. The Aram Mini Turbo was particularly popular with Japanese buyers. In 1994, under Bernd Pischitz Reader, a first cousin once removed of Isaganus, BMW took control of the Rover Group, which included the Mini, fitting an airbag to comply with European legislation. By March 2000, Rover was still suffering massive losses and BMW decided to dispose of most of the companies. The sell-off was completed in May that year. MG and Rover went to Phoenix, a new British consortium, and Land Rover was sold to Ford Motor Company. BMW retained the Mini name and the planned new model, granting Rover temporary rights to the brand and allowing it to manufacture and sell the run-out model of the old Mini. By April 2000, the range consisted of four versions, the Mini Classic 7, the Mini Classic Cooper, the Mini Classic Cooper Sport and for overseas European markets the Mini Knightsbridge. The last Mini was built on October 4, 2000 and presented to the British Motor Industry Heritage Trust in December of that year. A total of 5,387,862 cars had been manufactured, nearly 1.6 million of which were sold in Britain, although the majority of these were sold at least 20 years before the Mini's demise, meaning that the majority of those sold had been scrapped before the end of the original Mini's production life. 
After the last of the Mini production had been sold, the Mini name passed to BMW ownership. Mini Hatch, the new model made by BMW, is technically unrelated to the old car but retains the classic transverse four-cylinder, front-wheel drive configuration and bulldog stance of the original. The last Mini to leave the Long Bridge plant did so in 2012, when a 1970s 1275 GT which was used by staff to travel around the car plant was recovered from the disused tunnels under the plant. The car was damaged by a storage container falling on it and had been left without an engine or gearbox for around 30 years before being recovered during work to infill the tunnels. This car was sold at auction in July 2013 for £1,400. From the Mark IV onward, many special limited production editions of the Mini were offered. These included models that were created to commemorate racing victories or to celebrate an anniversary of the Mini Mark. Limited editions generally came equipped with a unique combination of interior and exterior trim and special decals. Examples include Mini 1100 Special, Mini 1000, Special Hill Mini Rio, Mini Mayfair, Mini Park Lane, Mini Cooper RSP, Mini Flame, Mini Red Hot, Mini Jet Black, Mini Racing and the Mini Monza. There was also a version inspired by the Italian Job, a 1969 film famous for having a trio of minis in its epic closing car chase. From 1967 to 1979, Isaganis had been designing a replacement for the Mini in the form of an experimental model called the 9X. It was longer and more powerful than the Mini, but due to politicking inside British Leland, the car did not reach production. A number of prototypes produced for vehicles based on the Mini but which never saw production are held and sometimes displayed at the British Heritage Motor Centre Museum at Gaydon, Warwickshire. These included the Twini, a re-engineered four-wheel drive moke with two engines one at the front and another at the back, the Austin Ant, a second attempt to produce a four-wheel drive vehicle, this time using a transfer case and a two-seater convertible MG edition of the Mini, cancelled due to it being perceived as competition for the MG midget. In 1992, a project considering possible improvements to the Mini was started. Codenamed Minky, it included a redesigned dashboard, a two-piece rear door or tailgate instead of a boot fold-down rear seats, hydraulic suspension, and a three-cylinder version of the K-Series engine with a five-speed gearbox. However, the project was cancelled by management within Rover, who decided that the cost of engineering the changes, and achieving compliance with modern crash testing standards, was too great for the production volumes that could be expected of an updated Mini. In 1995 the idea to update the Mini again surfaced but this time with BMW management. As part of the process of deciding how to replace the Mini, a vehicle representing what the current Mini could have become, if it had been developed further over its production history, was commissioned. This resulted in the Minky 2 designed to house the 1.4L MPI K-Series engine with an extensive redesign inside, but without the original Minky's tailgate. The car had to be widened by 50mm and lengthened by 50mm to accommodate the new engine and gearbox, with hydraulic suspension and dashboard from a Rover 100. The Minky 2 was used for hydraulic development work this suspension being considered at the time for the R59 project, later to become the Mini Hatch. The cheapness and availability of used Minis make it a candidate for body replacement. There are over 120 Mini-based kit cars from various small companies and individual enthusiasts. B. 
BMC operated a competition department at Abingdon, Oxfordshire, under the control of Stuart Turner, which built specially prepared minis to compete in international rallies and other motorsport. This department played a key role in ensuring the Mini's huge success in motorsport throughout the 1960s, in particular, winning the Monte Carlo Rally in 1964, 1965 and 1967, the 1000 Lakes Rally in 1965, 1966 and 1967, and dominating all of the first nine positions in the 1966 Gallagher 500 at Bathurst. The car also won the 1961, 1962, 1969, 1978 and 1979 British Saloon Car Championship season, as well as the British Rally Championship in 1962, 1963 and 1970 the European Rally Championship in 1965 and 1966, and won the Finnish Rally Championship in 1965 and 1966. Minis also won the 1965 Lowood 4-hour endurance race, and the final Finnish Grand Prix in 1963. The Cooper S also had some success in the European Touring Car Championship winning in 1964 and 1968, the Gear Race of Macau, and the Australian Touring Car Championship, winning its class in 1962, 1963, 1964, 1966, 1967, and 1968. A further title was the 1971 Sun 7 Chesterfield Series. The Mini also enjoyed class wins at the 1963 Armstrong 500, repeating this feat every year until 1969, and having class wins at the 1964, 1965 and 1971 Sandown 250, and 6-hour LE Mans in 1963, 1964, 1965, 1966, 1967, 1968, 1969, 1970, and 1972, as well as the 1971 Phillip Island 500K. The car also won the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship in 1998. Mini Leland came fourth place in the under 2 liter category in the 1966, 1967 and 1969 Trans Am seasons, improving to third in 1970. The Mini Cooper S won the Monte Carlo Rally in 1964, 1965 and 1967. Minis initially placed first, second and third in the 1966 rally as well but were disqualified after a controversial decision by the judges. The disqualification related to the use of a variable resistance headlamp dimming circuit in place of a dual filament lamp. Fourth placed Roger Clark's Ford Cortina was disqualified for the same reason, along with six other cars. The fifth car passed the finishing line, a Citroën DS, a model that had won the race previously, was awarded first place the DS had similar headlamps, but these were standard production equipment on the car in line with the letter of the rules. The driver of the Citroën, Pauli Toivonen, felt that he hadn't really won the rally. BMC probably received more publicity from the disqualification than they would have gained from a victory. In Rally Cross, the Mini finished on the podium in the first ever race, at Lytton Hill Race Circuit in February 1967, winning races in the FIA European Rally Cross Championship in 1974 and 1975. The car competed as late as the 1979 Australian Rally Cross Championship. The SE7 ENS is the UK's longest-running one-make motor racing championship, 
having been introduced in 1966. As of 2014, classic minis are still raced, with other one-make races in the UK, Europe and Asia, and in classic events such as the Goodwood Members Meeting. In 2012 a mini broke the land speed record. A mini was used to set a record at the Chateau Imni Hill Climb. The mini has won many awards over the years, including second place in 1999's Global Car of the Century Award, behind only the Model T Ford. In the same competition, run by the prestigious Global Automotive Elections Foundation, the mini was selected European Car of the Century. Grassroots Motorsports awarded Mini with the Editor's Choice Award in 2002. The Mini also received awards for Car of the Century and Number One Classic Car of All Time. In the end 5.3 million Minis were sold, making it the most popular British car ever made. At its peak, the Mini was a strong seller in most of the countries where it was sold with the United Kingdom inevitably receiving the highest volumes. The one millionth Mini came off the production line in 1965, with the two millionth in 1969. The three millionth Mini came off the production line in 1972, with the four millionth in 1976. It dominated the mini car market until the arrival of the Hillman Imp in 1963. It outsold the Imp. Competition arrived with the more modern and practical Vauxhall Chevette of 1975, but the mini continued to sell well until its replacement the Metro arrived in 1980. By this time, the mini's design had been overtaken by numerous more modern and practical vehicles. Although the Metro did not replace the Mini, production figures for the Mini dipped during the 1980s, and interest in the design was not revived until the reintroduction of the Mini Cooper in 1989. This helped sales of the Mini through the 1990s, to the end of production on October 4, 2000. A total of 1,581,887 minis were sold in Britain after its launch in 1959. The last new one to be registered was sold in 2004, some four years after the end of production. The highest price ever paid for a mini was at a Bonhams auction in 2007, when a works rally prepared mini sold for £100,500. Between 1960 and 1967, BMC exported approximately 10,000 left-hand drive BMC minis to the United States. Sales were discontinued when stricter federal safety standards were imposed in 1968 and the arrival of the larger and more profitable Austin America. Many sales fell in the 1967 calendar year and the U.S. importer was expecting the forthcoming Austin America to find a larger market. The America was also withdrawn in 1972 due to slow sales and the introduction of bumper height standards. Today the U.S. government exempts cars older than 25 years from all import laws, so older minis can be freely imported. The Canadian government applies a similar rule after 15 years. Isaganis designed the Mini with an emphasis on active safety. Asked about the crashworthiness of the Mini he said I make my cars with such good brakes, such good steering, that if people get into a crash it's their own fault. And I don't design my cars to have accidents. In July 1965 BMC announced that following comments by safety experts about the Mini's external door handles, these would be modified on new cars so that the gap between the handle and the door panel would be effectively closed. Nicholas Faith states in his book that Murray McKay, one of the UK's leading motor vehicle crash and safety researchers, 
was critical of the pre-1967 Mini's passive safety features, including the protruding filler cap, the door latch, and the vulnerability of the passenger space to engine intrusion. The Mini was withdrawn from the American market because it could not meet the 1968 U.S. safety regulations and emission standards, and although often updated, not sufficiently to comply with U.S. regulations. It continued to be sold in Canada until 1979. The Mini was modified during its production to improve its safety. In 1974 a prototype Mini experimental safety vehicle was built, the Mini Clubman SRV4. It featured a longer crumple zone, a pedestrian-friendly front end, run-flat tires, strengthened door sills, extra internal padding and recessed door handles, the latter having been used earlier on Australian-built Minis owing to local laws. Jack Daniels, one of the original Isaganis team, is stated to have been working on further safety improvements for the Mini when he retired in 1977. Several times it was thought that safety regulations would stop Mini production safety improved in 1996 with the introduction of airbags and side impact bars. The Mini, challenged by increasingly demanding European safety and pollution standards, was planned by British Aerospace to be taken out of production in 1996, but BMW chose to invest to keep the Mini legal until the launch of a new model. In January 2007 which Magazine listed the Mini City in its 10 Worst Cars for Safety list, alongside other economical, lightweight, fuel-efficient cars like the Hyundai Pony 1.2L, Fiat Panda 900 Super, Suzuki Alto GL, Daihatsu Domino, Citroen AX11 Re, Yugo 45 and 55, Peugeot 205 gallons and the Citroën 2 CV6. A UK Department for Transport Statistics publication, presenting estimates of the risk of driver injury in two-car injury collisions, based on reported road accident data, estimated that the 1992,000 Mini was one of two small cars, which, with an estimated 84 percenter of drivers likely to be injured, presented the greatest risk of driver injury, the average risk for the small car category was 76 percenter. Several key events marked the 50th anniversary of the Mini in 2009. On January 13, 2009, the Royal Mail released a limited edition of stamps entitled British Design Classics, featuring an original, eggshell blue, MK1 Mini, Registration XAA 274. On May 17, a world record parade of 1,450 Minis congregated at Crystal Palace as part of a London to Brighton run. The following week, 10,000 Minis and 25,000 people attended an anniversary party at Silverstone Circuit on the border of Buckinghamshire and Northamptonshire. Between 7-10 August 2009 approximately 4,000 minis from around the world congregated at Longbridge, Birmingham to celebrate the 50th anniversary. On August 26, 2009, Small Car BIGCITY launched in London to provide sightseeing tours of the capital in a fleet of restored mini coopers.